right, this is Joel here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Dean White, ringside after a Coley beat Sislak. Um, first things first, how you doing, man? I'm excellent. How you doing, man? Yeah, very good. It was a good fight. It was entertaining. Good crowd as well. The Polish fans were loud. The Polish fans were amazing. They come out, they turned out for their man. And um, he put on a great performance. They, he was everything they said he was. They said he wasn't like the rest. He was tough, he was durable, and he came to bring it. And um, uh, it was exciting, yeah. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of hugging, some people would call it, which clearly frustrated his lack at times. I think it was maybe the end of the sixth. <laughs> end of the sixth, where they both almost, well, they were hitting each other after the bell. It seemed like they were both that getting frustrated. Amazing. That had remnants, O2. Uh, what, December the 12th, 2015, AJ and Dillian White. Hey, listen, out of the remnants, boy, trust me. But it's all good, man. Listen, man, it was great. Both guys, they really wanted it, and they and you could you could sense their hunger, their desire, their passion. And and they, they were still punching, like you said, all the way into the end of the bell, man. Yeah, uh, after the bell, actually. And, and after the bell, yeah. Uh, I want to quickly, very quickly, talk on that walkout. That's one of the best I've seen. He had Amazing. Israel Adesanya, AJ, and then Ballon d'Or, Kid and uh, Burner Boy. What a cheat. Amazing. Listen, man, that was really that was really a statement. That was really the magnitude of that. It was solid, man. You know, in the empowerment of these brothers doing good things, these Nigerian brothers, black brothers doing good things across the sports, boxing, UFC. Listen, man, it transcends, man. It was it was really the solidarity through these brothers doing things. And it's a powerful statement. So, you know, what I mean, credit to them. I didn't know Israel or AJ were coming, but it made that moment, that walkout feel bigger. Big business. That is big business. Them Nigerian boys, they're cleaning up. USC, I love USC. You know what I mean? yo, the big one. What's the next big one? Usman. Uh, Usman. And um, no, the heavyweight. Oh, uh, and Garner. And Garner, look. It's just, it's the, these men are making ways. And then Joshua's doing his thing. And then Nicole is doing his thing. It's big business, man. We can't, you know what I mean? And that, like you said, that's probably going to be one of the best walkouts we're ever going to see in boxing, to be honest. Yeah, I didn't even expect it as well. Dillian White had a back and forth with Ngani. How was that ever real? Was that ever going to happen? I'm not too sure. I heard Eddie talking about it and saying it was potentially real, but you know, let's see what happens, man. You know what I mean? I think they're talking about Tyson Fury and them doing it, so let's see. <laughs> More than talking, the 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 fight's base. Well, it's been announced now. Wembley standing. What kind of walkout are we expecting for Dillian? I'm talking about Tyson Fury and Ngani. They were talking about. But look, that's that's official. It's, it's you know, it's out there. It's on top rank. It's on Fret Warren. It's everywhere that it's announced and it's going down. You know, look, credit to the boys. They got it across the line in the end. And we look forward to a mega, mega fight in the United Kingdom. And we're going to look forward to getting a new WBC world champion. Yeah, Wembley Stadium, that's going to be electric, man. Just um, how happy are you that it's over the line? Because it takes so long to get these deals done. Do you know, at this end of the spectrum of boxing, there's always niggles, there's rig wriggles. And when people are talking about the contracts not being signed, both parties have to be happy with it to be complete and it being signed. So we, the people have to understand that. There's negotiations and you come to the table. Both parties have to be happy. People must understand that and not think Dillian should sign because what? He's a puppy and he just listens to you guys and just signs because you guys say he should sign and fight. Come on, man. Let's, you know, people who've got a job, they don't just sign the, the first contract someone gives them. There is a negotiation or you look at the contract. If you're happy, you sign. If you're not happy, you say, I believe I'm worth more. And that's what happens in these instances. Um, so, it, you know, they finally got across the line. Good credit to those boys. And now we're looking forward to a big, big fight at the O2, not an O2, Wembley in, um, in um, April the 23rd. Could you shed some light on what Dillian was doing? Obviously, he waited till the last moment to sign the contract. I couldn't shed any light on anything. There's only probably darkness, and that's what we're looking for, darkness. And hopefully, we'll put Tyson Fury into darkness and snatch that belt from him. What do you, what do you mean when you say you're looking for darkness? I don't get it. You know, darkness, when you go to sleep, your eyes are closed, there's only darkness. <laughs> Come on, kid. <laughs> kid? Um, nah, 21. My God, my son yeah. don't do you mean, so yeah. Swear, mad, mad. <laughs> um, I want to talk about what's next for Akoli very quickly, only what one or two more topics. Um, after tonight, Breedus was in the ring. I was speaking to Galal at the time. I don't know what was happening, but it seems like that unification fight's finally happening. Uh, look, that is inevitable that that's going to be on the line. Marius Breedus is the top dog, has been at the top doing his thing for a long time. Akoli wants to become the number one. He believes he's the best. Matchroom believes he's the best. That's why they're pushing their guy and him giving him his stuff. That was a that was a, a good learning curve. But he's gonna have to raise the bar now, I think, to to beat maybe someone like Marius Bradis um, and prove he is the number one and he is the best in the division. Um, I think it's a great fight. It's 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 an, an inevitable step for him to make 
to develop and grow and try and unify the division and become undisputed. There's loads of fights out there for him to make. But let's see what happens, you know what I mean? But it's one step at a time. He can't run before he can walk. This was a true, good, gritty, tough fight. I felt like he was buzzed in there a little bit and he recovered. He had a great pull for the face. He did good stuff. I felt like there was a times he could have maybe let his hands go a little bit more in combination shots. But you know what? Look, he's a champ. He, he got his poker face, he used his jab, he used the ring and done what he had to. He didn't get a knockout in there today, but that guy was very, very durable and he had his great, amazing fans and they made the house, they, they blew the roof off. Literally, it was blew off the other day, but they probably uh, continued that. <laughs> um, how would he get on at heavyweight, Akoli? I think he'll do good, but what I said to someone earlier, this is not a spite or a dig, I think... As you saw in there, he kind of tired at the beginning and he was wrestling with someone who was a lot smaller. The bigger, stronger, more physical heavyweights, as the rounds get um, to the real, you know, elite rounds and the, the championship rounds, I think he's going to maybe struggle with more physical demanding guys. But I think in with certain heavyweights, I think he'll clean up because speed kills, he's got good movement, he's got a good long jab and he's got power. He, he knows how to dig. So with some of these boys, he's going to clean a lot of them up. But I think when he gets to certain boys who are more physical and more tougher, he might find it a little bit difficult. But yet again, early he's going to be dangerous. Later it will be one of those ones where, you know, that physically wrestling and grappling with someone who's, you know, 130 kg, it's going to be a big difference, you know what I mean? Um, and just quickly back on the Dillian White thing, I forgot to ask about the silent treatment. How do you think that will affect Fury in the build-up if that's how Dillian White treats it? Obviously, you can see it's affecting Fury already. He's making videos every day. He's ripping his hair out because he's probably wondering, is this fight going to sell out? Am, am I going to get my money? Is Dillian going to play his part? What's going to happen? Frank, tell me something. Yes, he, he said, Frank, tell me what's happening. How are we going to make the money? Dillian's got to talk. He's got to fucking say something. He's got to say something. I don't know. Who knows? A Manchester accent. I don't know what accent it was. Who knows? But, you know, like, they need him to probably, you know, talk. But look, either way, Dillian's getting paid either way. Talk, n no talk, you know, you know, whatever. Uh, maybe sign language. I don't know. Do sign. But, you know, they need to respect people. And in this business, it goes a long way respecting, you know, in this business. So if they want to... You know, they need to think about how they conduct their business and how they deal with him. And then that might play a part in how everything starts to progress and move on. But look, it's going to be a good fight nevertheless. Let's see what happens this week. Just one more thing then. As you stick to, do you think that's going to happen just because of the stuff going on in Ukraine at the moment? Um, I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, what happens in that fight if it does go ahead in, in London? And the new. That's what we're looking for, man. Free time. And the new. That's what we're looking for, man. But anyway, check out Black Box Global, May the 14th. Again, we're going three times, baby. Boxing has free. I was going to end on that. You've obviously had a few shows now, a couple shows. How's that been? And you can close off the interview with this. Um, you know, I'm a fan of boxing. So it was inevitable going into promotion, boxing promotion. And we're flying. That's all I can say. We are flying, literally flying. We're doing great, great numbers. You know, bums on seats, good attendance, good fights. The next show, May the 14th, I'm hoping to have... Maybe an English title, Southern Area title, and maybe a WBO, inter, inter, you know, international, intercontinental, whichever WBC we're looking, we're working. Hopefully, I can have a, a few title fights on the line, but we definitely plan to have a couple, and uh, God willing, it, it all goes to plan. But we're, we're continuing to grow, man. We're, you know, the blueprint's there to, to see, and, you know, we're, 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 bringing this, we're bringing this thing to the, you know, the boxing, the culture, the diversity for the sport, you know what I mean, and bringing on people just from man's demographic and, and beyond and young prospects coming into boxing who you know are around man's kind of neighborhood so you know it's grassroots building and we want to get into that championship side where we are putting on good fights because people want to see title and good fights you know what I mean the blueprints there shout out Jay-Z um <laughs> it's always a pleasure speaking to you Dean Thank